you know that thing, me versus reboots on series that I love. Mm. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for And Just Like That. This is episode one of season one. Yes, it's a reboot of Sex in the City. Um, I've actually, I've walked around this for a while. I've walked around it for a while. One, because it's kind of rough to, to do series that are streamed and everything is out there. Um, when it comes to me and reviews, I'm still trying to figure that thing out, you know, as opposed to something that comes on weekly and all of that kind of thing. When they're doing dropping multiple episodes, it kind of throws things off because sometimes people get ahead of me and then it's kind of hard, but whatever. That's not what we're here for. But reboots as a whole, me and reboots is kind of like a, mm, especially if I really, really like the show, I'm not a fan of reboots. But we'll see, we'll see. I stepped into this, I loved, 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 loved Sex in the City, okay? So I said, I'm willing to go ahead and give it a try. I have to say, episode one, I really enjoyed episode one. Episode one really did, it, it was like going into a, a time portal a little bit, just a little bit, because Sex in the City was able to, it was an escape. It was more, it was fun. It was fun. I could, a lot of times I could relate to some of the things they were talking about, though I don't live in New York. I don't, you know, I've been in New York, you know, twice in my life, once as an adult. Um, just to see, it was fun watching them maneuver and manage New York as, you know, successful, groovy women. You know what I mean? That, that, that was fun to all that. It was something that I looked forward to watching and, and, and it was an escape and it was kind of, it was fun. It was fun. Then it all, the writing was always really good. So they could actually trigger emotions in you. And none of that stuff is missing. None of that stuff is missing in this. Um, as far as I could see so far, I got entrapped in, in the first 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, natural, they're all older. They're all in their fifties now. Of course, I just joined the 50 club last month. So I'm like, again, I can relate some of the things that we're talking about. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, I was amazed at how they just fell back into their characters. Cause that's what they are they're like characters but they did it so long but they literally fell right back into characters and it was just like old friends that we hadn't seen in a while and i was like this is this is pretty good this is pretty good but a lot of um what i, I noticed in this it's a lot of ageist situations and then some racist stuff you know that kind of went on and it was like oh very interesting very now so so i thought the writing was really good and like I said they were able to invoke emotions like immediately with, with me um, a lot of the old characters were there and were back and it was just like really really cool really really cool right away we noticed that there's only three Samantha is gone there is no Samantha we find out right away that Samantha is not there uh, Samantha has moved was it to France that she moved she's moved out of the country um, the last interaction she had with any of the ladies, she was supposedly, she, you know, she was publishing for Carrie and Carrie decided to go a different direction and she fired her and that like ruined the friendship and they haven't spoken since. And then she moved out of the country and then she just cut all ties and all communication with everybody. I'm like, okay. All right. So, I mean, of course you know, they had to write it how they had to write it. I mean, I think I'm... I'm better with them writing Kim Cattrall's character out of the situation altogether rather than trying to sell us a new Samantha. So I'm here for it. It's cool. But that's it. She told them the hell with you all. She don't fool with them. So that's that. Um, 
Yeah, so Carrie's pretty broken up. She's like, I thought we would be friends forever. Charlotte is still Charlotte. Charlotte is still all about appearances it, to the point of obnoxiousness. Um, she, They're in a restaurant having lunch when, they first, when we first start, and she's just going in with this whole thing and being Charlotte, saying hurtful stuff and not really realizing that she's being hurtful. Because, again, everything with her is about appearances. She's, like, reading Miranda about Miranda has let her hair go gray. And she's, like, basically telling her, okay, because Miranda's going to, actually going back to school. She's going back to school. Um, and uh, she's like, are you going to dye your hair back red or whatever? And she's like, no, I don't feel the need to do that. Like, we can't stay where we are. You know, stay where we were. We have to, like, move on. And I've moved on. I'm not worried about it. I don't have to be a hot redhead to get people's attention. I'm I'm smart. I'm accomplished. I, I don't have to have that. And my hair is gray now. I'm not who I was. Um, Charlotte's like, well, she just wouldn't let it go. You know how Charlotte is. Charlotte's still obnoxious. She was just Charlotte. You know, and that's that. Um, but after they walked away from the conversation... Miranda then end up asking Carrie, what do you think about my hair? Carrie's like, I think it looks fabulous. And let me just say, the first, you know, I, I always love the odd way in which Carrie puts things together. Carrie had on these bad-ass pants, honey, that had these panels down the side that were like, it looked like pieces of a skirt, like a long maxi skirt, but they just were sewn to the side. It was so sharp. They were so, those pants were everything. They were so sharp. I was like, oh my God. And they moved well and it just, they were really sharp. They really were sharp. Um, but she asked her, she says, no girl, I think it looks fabulous. It's fine. And then there's later on in the program, we still see her. She's still kind of questioning herself because the stuff that Charlotte said to her kind of penetrated, you know what I mean? It penetrated which is what people do. That's the real world. People do that. Um, just nice, nasty. It was very nice, nasty. And that's what she was saying. Carrie still colors her hair. You know what I mean? And she's like, but Carrie's not like trying to cover up anything. That's just part of Carrie's style. She said, but see you, you're trying to be young. You're trying to look young. I'm not trying to do that. I was like, she put up a good argument at the table, but then when she walked away from the table, it was like, girl, that wasn't a good argument at all because you're actually, she, she pierced her soul with her bull crap. But that was that. Um, Miranda, the very first day, she walked into the class and screwed up bad. She walks in. Um, naturally, you see the ageist thing going on because Everybody else is younger than her. She sits in a seat and they say, oh, that's where the professor sits. And she's like, oh my God. So she goes, sits across the room. So the professor actually walks in. And it's, a, it's a black woman. And she has her hair in braids. Really pretty black woman. And she, sister and Miranda says, oh, no, 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 no. That's where, the, that's where the professor sits. And she's like, I am the professor. And then from that point, she just started putting her foot in her mouth. You know, it was like, Oh, she's like, well, what is it? You know, was it a problem with my hair? It's my... She just kept firing. Oh, no, it's not about you being black. It's not about your hair. It's not about your... It was like, girl, just shut up. And the more she talked, the further into the ageist, racist rhetoric she kept going. All the wrong things being said. It was like, girl, just shut up. So naturally, we have this teacher who now she literally, and the class, they're all looking at her. They think you're a racist. They think you're crazy. And then she ran into her teacher again on the subway and wants to talk to her. Teacher's on the phone with her husband. She hangs up with her husband. And here we find out real quickly that they're going through IVF. Um, she got a lot of stuff on her plate anyway. And now she just really thinks that Charlotte is a, not Charlotte, I'm sorry, that Miranda's a weirdo. And for the most part, you are coming off as a weirdo. Anyway, um, Carrie. Carrie is now not doing her little typing thing, doing her blog anymore. She is actually part of a podcast. And the age thing comes up again. Things are different now. The world's different you know, than it was back when 
we would watch Sex in the City. And, uh, you know, sex is more free. You know, she was like, the, the woo was naughty. You know, she was a naughty pleasure back in her day. And now it's, you know, it's more free and it's all this gender fluidness and all of this stuff. And she got really choked up when they were actually having a conversation at the podcast about, they were on the air, about masturbation and public masturbation. And uh, her co-host... You see her, she is, uh, she's a lesbian woman and uh, she she's more on the stud side. So you have to kind of double take to see where she is in the rainbow. Like, and she said, I enjoy that. I enjoy going places that people are trying to figure out. The boys are trying to figure out if I'm a boy. The girls are trying to figure out if I'm a girl. And, you know, that whole thing. She's like, she thinks it's funny. You know, it is what it is. Um she has this conversation with Karen. She basically tells her, girl, you're going to have to step your pussy up, child. And Karen's like, I'm going to call. You know, just everything, the way things are, Carrie all of a sudden is starting to look prudish, where Carrie was always the, you know, she was the groundbreaking one. But now, you know, things have moved, moved on such to a point where she's now like the prude, honey. She's looking like Charlotte. And it's like funny. And her and Biggs are actually married. They're living this life. And I'm like, wow, it's, it was cute to see how happy and normal that they are now. And I was like, isn't this something? Like, they are just happy and normal, period. Happy and normal. I'll get to that in a minute. So Charlotte's daughter, Lily, is she's doing the piano. She has a recital. Biggs and Carrie are supposed to be going to the Hamptons on uh, Wednesday. We're going to leave on Wednesday. Charlotte's driving it, driving it, driving it. Oh, but this is this and this is that, and you have to come. And... So they're like, fine, fine, no problem. That's on Thursday. We'll do it. No problem. Well, no problem. We'll just leave on Friday. So that was that. I got that set up. In the midst of them being in the restaurant in the beginning, we introduced to a new character, which is played by Nicole Aubrey Parker, who I love from Soul Food, one of my other shows, honey. And her name is LTW. She's like this very popular mom, okay? And we find out really quickly, uh, she, Charlotte is is like brown nosing. She, she's, she's brown nosing. Um, where it is, I don't think she really had the brown nose with LTW. LTW is really cool. She has a mother-in-law that she can't stand. Mother-in-law is a concert pianist. She was a former concert pianist. Her son is the one that's learning piano, but she said he really isn't interested. She's like, I have to pry his fingers off of PlayStation to get him to even touch the piano. So we got all that. That's the new character. We've seen Anthony and Stanford. They are the same. They are just as gay as can be, and just fussing with each other, just fussing, just always in an argument. They're always button heads. It's because they're both queens, funny, but that's, that's a whole nother. I'm not trying to be politically correct. They're both queens, and that's why they keep on bumping heads, honey. They bump in pocketbooks and lose a change, and that's why they bump heads, honey. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> anyhow, it can work. For them, I mean, that's what that's their space, their space. I ain't bumping pocketbooks and losing change and screaming it with no other queen about changing clothes and how long it's taking her to change clothes. No, not my thing, but, you know, hey, some of the other girls like Kai Kai and all of that. So that's another subject for another video anyway. But they're, they're there and they both look great and they are you know, doing their thing and they're back too. Everybody's back, everybody looks good. So, um, what else? What else, where are we? This is what everybody's doing. Okay, over at Charlotte's house. So we got Lily, remember they adopted Lily, and then she had Rose. Rose is the apple of her father's eye, okay? Rose is a rebel. Rose ain't up for none of Charlotte's bullshit. She really is like, She's more of a free spirit. She's more like her father. And then Lily is just a picture of perfection. 
okay? She is the apple of Charlotte's eye, okay? So, either way, I'm like, okay, so this is what they got going on. So they had this whole big fight about this Oscar de la Renta dress. She bought these two Oscar de la Renta dresses for the girls to wear to the recital. Honey, Miss Rose said, girl, I don't want to wear that, honey. I don't want to wear it. And so it was like a whole big thing. He was trying to get dressed. It was just falling apart. It was a mess. So her husband, he ended up telling her, he's like, okay. He's like, could you just wear a dress? She's like, I want to wear what I want to wear. He's like, okay. So he finally had to break. He's like, could you just wear a dress? So they let her wear the dress her way. She put the dress on and she put this little funny little shirt on and this funny little hat, little tonsil cap hat on. Hilarious. Completely hilarious. She is truly her father's daughter and Rose is truly her mother's daughter. Hilarious. Hilarious, hilarious. And the dog just don't like Charlotte, honey. <laughs> funny. Funny. So... We go from there. Now, I'm saying to myself, I said, this is really something, you know, how I'm, I'm like all into the, to the show and I'm like, I am just really enjoying myself watching this. I'm like, this is, you know, get you some ice cream and sit down and, and watch. But I was moving too soon. I said, this is always it. They always got to do a shift. Either they're going to shock you or they're going to make you cry. They're going to do something. You know, and I'm all the way through this. If we get to the, we get there to the, the recital child, Miranda, then snuck some wine in. I said, see, girl, you just get it. She just snuck some wine in. Of course, Charlotte's like, she said, do you want some wine, honey? And she said, uh, oh, and her husband can't hear, child. He's losing his hearing. Just old, everybody, just old nappy, honey. So <laughs> she got these little cup, little Dixie cups. She pouring wine out of her purse. I said, yes, girl, a little purse 45, honey. So <laughs> Carrie said, oh, yeah. I would love some wine out of your purse. <laughs> I love a little purse wine, honey. I was falling out laughing. Listen, I had a girlfriend like that. Ghetto, ghetto, ghetto child. And I, child, call me bougie if you want. I ain't pulling no wine out no purse or no beer or no liquor out no purse. That just is, that's, that's a bit too much. But I was sitting there screaming there at a concert hall. And you got wine in your purse. Well, I'm laughing. And um, and remember, she was a lawyer. <laughs> Just ghetto. Anyway, but as they're coming in, LTW comes down and she's like, Girl, do you have wine in your purse? Girl, give me a cup, honey. I, that's what I said. LTW, I am loving Nicole Ari Parker. Already in this, she is like so down and she, she fits, she'll fit with the group. She'll fit. I love her, that LTW character. I love her. She don't like that damn mother-in-law. That mother-in-law don't like her, but she's not disrespectful. She's not disrespectful. And then she got her husband and, and he was like, pass it, pass it. She's like, well, what's he said? She said, you don't even know what's in my cup. Because um, when their son with the doing his little thing, he was bombing, honey. <laughs> that poor thing. He could, he's a cute little boy. He could, First, he couldn't get the bench together where he was sitting. I said, well, he must go going to throw down, honey, because he kept moving the bench. So I said, okay, so you got that together. And then he sits down, child, and just what he did to that piano was just not called for. Honey, that mother-in-law looked back like, Y'all didn't bring me here to embarrass me, honey. Girl, get over it, honey. He was horrible. <laughs> the father said, just pass the cup. He took the cup and <laughs> down it. He didn't know what the hell, what kind of wine it was. He said, as long as it's alcoholic, just give it a... <laughs> I was sitting there screaming. It was, a, it was funny, funny as hell. Now, while all this is going on, Carrie... And Biggs, you know, he's like, just, you know, he's taking a spin class on line. And it's funny because they kept making these jokes about this other woman, the lady who teaches it. She's like hot. She's this hot instructor. When she was leaving out of the house, first thing you have to know, she's getting dressed. She has this cute little um, little culotte pants and little top, you know, real cute and a jacket. And then she goes and she goes into her closet. And of course, it's like gorgeous. 
and she's like, hello, lovers, to her shoes. And you have to pay attention to what shoes it is. It's the wedding shoes. The gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blue satin wedding shoes. Or blue silk, excuse me, blue silk wedding shoes. And she comes out and she's standing there. She says, do you notice anything? He's like, no. And she's like, she stomps her feet. He's like, of course I noticed the wedding shoes. And she's like, yes. So she said, okay, I'm going. Maybe I'll go out for a drink. I don't know, whatever. And he's like, all right, go on. And he's like, she's like, what's, what's wrong? What are you looking at? She's like, he's like, I'm just looking at you. I'm just looking at you. And um, she goes, I'm like, this is so cute. They are so happy now. Like they, they get it. They finally, they get each other and they're just happy now. And I'm like, oh man, I love this. Oh, and this is the thing. You know, she always can get him going. I was like, Ooh. when they told her at work, she just stepped her pussy up, right? She goes and she asked Biggs, do you masturbate? He's like, is this a trick question? He's like, why do I think I need legal counsel if I'm going to answer this question? <laughs> he said, do you? She said, yes. And so she's like, okay. So she gets up on the bed and then she tells him, I want you to masturbate. For me, he's like, are you going to join me? She's like, no, I just want to watch you. I just want to see what you do. I want to see what you're doing. And look, Biggs, that's why I said, I got to love Biggs, honey. He, she's like, what are you doing? He said, getting some lube, honey, out of his little side of the drawer. I said, oh, baby, he went right on over there and got to tearing that little thing up, honey. I said, oh, <laughs> and she's sitting there watching him. I said, that, that for me as like this married mature couple i thought it was really sexy it was really sexy and it was really cute and it was actually a racy little topic but it was really it was done real well it was real classy. the scene was really classy the way it was shot i said no you ain't tearing that little thing up honey and she was over there i said y'all something honey but we had that going anyway so i think she's gonna be fine with the podcast i think she's gonna eventually you know carrie always she she can adapt she'll adapt Anyway, so she goes to the recital. Of course, chow, that dog on Miss Lily tore the recital up, honey. Tore it up. Tore it up. It was perfect. Perfect. And as she's doing that, they keep flashing back and forth to Biggs. Biggs is doing a spin class and he's getting it. Getting it, getting it, getting it. I was like, Biggs, you're going kind of hard. He's sweating. So you're going kind of hard, baby. So then I said, oh, no. Oh, no. I said, no, 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 no. I know where y'all going. I know where y'all trying to take me to, but I'm not going. I said, I'm not getting ready to do this with you all. We're not going to start this up where Biggs is going to get sick. Right at episode one, uh -uh, I'm not doing this with you all. So when they finish the solo, then we see Biggs is done. He's off of the thing. He's, he's got his phone. He's going toward the shower. And he, um, you see them kind of, messing with his arm and I said mm -mm, mm -mm. I was sitting there on the couch I was laying on the couch I just sat up by this time I was like oh no 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 we're not doing this we are not doing this so he goes and when he goes to reach to turn he's turning the water on and then he ends up dropping his phone it drops into the shower and then he is like and then he grabs his chest and then he slides down the wall. He's sitting there. So the shower's just running. He's sitting on the floor. And the phone, he can't reach the phone because that arm was just not doing anything. I said, oh, here we go again. You remember he had a heart attack before. And we're like, oh, man, here we go. So at this time, by this time, some time goes by, you see the recital and Carrie ends up texting big we can go ahead and leave tonight because you know she's like we'll just go ahead and leave and drive up tonight no he texts her we'll go ahead and, and drive up tonight he was saying that to her before he went to go get in the shower so she had opened her phone she was going to go out with stanford for a drink and she, uh, stanford was telling her i'm going to take and go to your old apartment for the night because i'm not going to have an argument with anthony all night and she said, I'll give you my key. He said, I made a key last time I was over there fussing with him. So um, she looked at her text, seeing that he said, we'll just leave and ride up tonight. She tells Stanford, okay, go ahead. I'll see you later. I can't go out for a drink. We're going to leave tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and head home. 
she comes in the door and you hear the water running. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So then she goes and then she sees him sitting on the floor in front of the shower and he's just sitting there and he's like sitting and she's sitting and she's like, Biggs? And she's looking at him and I'm like, and he's still respond like she, he's responsive and he's looking at her like, fuck, you know? And then is when it happened. I said, oh my God, they are right back where they start, where, where we were. When she screeched out, John, I was done. I was done, done, done. The tears just rolled down my face because I already knew. When she screeched out the way she did it, Sarah Jessica Parker, girl, bravo, honey. She did that. You understand me? She screeched out his name, and when she called him by name, I knew he was done. He's gone. She ran over to him and she's like, cause he started to slide over like, and she gets him and he took his last breaths and everything with her. And it was, all the symbolism was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. How the shoes got wet. Cause she didn't reach up and turn off the shower. She grabbed him and she's like, John, John, John. And then his eyes, and I was like, oh no, 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 no. And then the shoes got wet. I was like, it's finished, honey, he's gone. He is gone. And that's, they showed like how she literally had got over and got behind him. Now she's basically in the shower. And then she just like kind of came out of the shoe and the shoes were left being soaked. You know how much the damn shoes cost. Being soaked in the water. And she's there holding him and it, child. It gave me everything that Sex in the City has ever given. I was here for it. I was here for it. I smiled, I laughed, I had fun with it, and then they broke my heart all at the same time, which is the Sex in the City experience. Anybody who has watched it up to this point, you know I'm telling the truth. That is the Sex in the City experience, child. They make you happy, they make you laugh, they make you think, and then they will break your heart. Like at their wedding. When he didn't show up, and then he ran into her on the street and Charlotte told him, no, no, child. They break your heart, honey. This was that, but he's gone, y'all. So spoiler alert, Biggs is gone. I said, y'all really did this? You all really killed Mr. Biggs in the first episode? Now, I got to, I got to continue watching because I got to see where you're going to go. You killed Biggs. Where are we going? Where are we going? So. I don't know, but this was episode one. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, they made me cry. I mean, cry, cry, like the horror cry. <laughs> I was like, oh. So anyway, I'm going to continue watching. You all continue watching, and we'll chat about it. All right. And oh, that was, and that was the line. And just like that, he was gone. She said they were gone. They were gone. And just like that, they were gone. I was like, oh. Anyway, I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Later.